Hi guys. Have we got a treat for you today? Yes, a change of shirts. <laughs> Doesn't he look gorgeous in his, uh, it's not even You're vibrant, You're amazingly it? fast getting ready for this. <laughs> yeah, alright. So what are you going to talk about today? Well, I only wrote one letter in my life when I was back then. Yes. And I never read the Bible then, I didn't read the Bible now. Yes. So what's that to you? Why? Because I'm it. I don't need to read the Bible. I can just say, it's a load of crap, most of it. But there's some good things in it now and then, it makes it true. Uh, teachings of truth always resonate and uh, what we're enjoying as uh, people are coming in from uh, the other sites that have finally <laughs> announced mm -hmm. the news that's being suppressed is that you, you use the word you are resonating with the truth. That's what it's all about. Well, absolutely. Those who belong to Yah, which is what the year of the redeemed is, as Yah talks about the year of redeemed. All right, let's see what that is. It's probably a question that's going to be asked. No, no, yeah. no, it's all, it's all right. It's up there. They understand the planetary position that's described, but what does it actually mean? It actually means that you come in and find Yah, and your soul is redeemed from having to go out any more of the temple read Revelation 3.12. It's the, really, those that belong to Yah finding their way home, the sheep recognising yeah. the shepherd. And it's a place of rest and peace, love and joy, and finally you can go, oh my God. Now, the, the, the happier you are, the, this will resonate through to other people around you. Yes. And uh, just put on a happy face. And uh, I finished the PowerPoint today, which talks about the letter that I answered from... Uh, the king of Edessa, um, who offered me refuge and uh, also said that he had leprosy and he knew that I could cure him and would I do that. And in my letter to him I said that I basically, if you read it, we, we'll, we'll do it for you, um, that I had to go back to heaven. And uh, after that I will send you a cloth. A disciple. You a disciple will you bring. Send a disciple. Right? And that's the face cloth, the big square one, that's now the, uh, uh, was it, Maglion? Mandeline. Mandeline. Mm. A, a, a Sidoni. It's in Spain, I believe, at the moment. And um, uh, it healed him just by having the essence. Now, there's another lady that was uh, touched my garment, and I said, my, I can feel my virtue go out. And what that basically means is that she was healed by taking some of the uh, energy of uh, holiness from the garment because the garment picks up the DNA from the wearer. That's why you shouldn't wear other people's clothes. You shouldn't buy second-hand clothing. Or something. If you went to India, you can't buy second-hand clothes because they all know that. They, uh, you, you've got second-hand clothes, you throw them out, make rags of it. So, that's in the, the PowerPoint. So, it's all to do with light, and uh, light, how it is uh, affected by the DNA of the human being, which is made in the image of God. So, it doesn't matter how far away you uh, take, uh, let's say, a double helix uh, uh, DNA, you take it 50 miles away, and it will instantly react to the emotions of the, the uh, donor of the, the donor. DNA. And you've got 100 trillion cells in your body. So uh, you take these cells out 50 miles, 100 miles, doesn't matter. And it's not subject to time or space. So when my mother Daphne conceived, it was on the same date of the resurrection, and uh, the blood on the Shroud of Turin, of course, is what it's all about. Um, that blood uh, transferred the DNA emotion of the resurrection to the conception within my mother. Daphne Galati, most of all, that's how that all comes about. So that's in that video we're going to do and show you in a moment. Right. So the lovely positive comments are continuing to come in and the uh, emails, of course. I'll, I'll read this one from uh, Hawaii again, everything for your edification and understanding that. The relief, the rest, the peace, the comfort, and the joy 
that the soul who recognises the father, that's what it's all about, to become like a small child, is that a child recognises their father and will run to him in a crowd. And a good father, of course, which is what God is, the best, his instinct is to protect his children from all harm. And you're all my children. And Even that's... the ones that are lost. I don't want to lose anybody. No. Okay, so my... <laughs> Why does this do this? Why is it so? Too quick. No, it's it's right. the capital Y. So this right. is the email, is it? Yes, aloha. From aloha, where? everybody. Where, from where? I think from Hawaii. I, I, I said that we'd be greeting everybody with aloha. I forgot. <laughs> this is actually round two. This video is round two. But anyway. <laughs> aloha and sweet blessed day, Father Yahweh and Mother Ash. Uh, mahalo and thank you. Your videos are sweet spiritual nectar for my soul. And that is what it's all about. Filled with wisdom beyond the ages that only Yah, the Father of Time, can provide. Throughout the years I've had so many questions regarding the truth of Yeshua and Yahweh, including every aspect of our existence throughout history. Mm. Finally, my questions are being answered one by one with each video and with each document of authenticity that is revealed to me. Hence my unshakable faith, knowing that Yah is truly Jesus Christ reborn. It is truly a miracle to have found you, Yahweh, such an amazing miracle, one that most people can't seem to realise. Yet those of us that personally find you upon seeing your face and feeling your energetic signature, we remember you. Be, because we know our Father, we can feel your heart and we can feel your most holy essence. So yes, our emotions toward you is very real because you are our creator, our original Father Yahweh, our true God and comforter. And then she's quoting from Matthew 17, 20, If ye have faith as a grain of mustard seed, ye shall say unto this mountain, Remove hence to yonder place, and it shall remove, and That's nothing right. shall be impossible unto you. That's right. And then she goes on, she would like to make a, put together a PowerPoint presentation, so that she may do her part in announcing to all of the people around her where she lives. And then she's asked for certain documents um, that I will send through the email. They're on our hard drives. And um, yes, I will gather as many lost sheep as possible. Unfortunately, the Mormons infiltrated these islands, yet oh, there are still exactly. many... Christians here, since the Christian, and she's got in brackets, Jewish ministry, missionaries didn't seem to miss a spot on our no, precious that's planet. Been there a couple of times. Those buffoons. All there, is, there is an essay in that community on the big island, on the, uh, must be on the other side of the airport. Um, I went around there, they threw me out. Of oh, course. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that reminds me. Let's make this day a funny story uh, uh, according to rejection. I'll just finish reading this because you say that all that are meant to receive the call shall hear the call with faithful acceptance and devotion of you. And yes, that's what it's all about. So uh, thank you again for your email and to others. Uh, our and your foundation, your, your beautiful email. And of course, Tiffany, thank you. Looking forward to the date that you organise with your crew. Sounds like you, I counted eight of you, eight of you all together. That's a surprise for the us. Crew. The, the crew from uh, oh, Tiffany's no uh, uh, hangout. No. Not saying too much now um, no. to keep it all, you know, so things don't come against you. Anything to do with us, we usually have things start happening to people that. No. Uh, Fun, but it's, but it's all it's all falling away. It's all passing away. The darkness is passing away, and uh, we've been notified that um, Gary's not feeling too well. So yes, send him a nice little cheerio. Yes, for those that you know Gary, 
just tell him to begin praying in the new name. We are concerned for his health, of course, but adopt the new name, which is Yahweh Jesus, Brian Leonard, go like We might send him a hanky. That's right. We're cutting up the linen I've got upstairs <laughs> into squares of 12 by 12, 144, and uh, hem them and send them out. And funny stories. Oh, yesterday, guys, there's a couple of guys, um, Hawkeye, you're one of them, and, and I think it was Dave, somebody, who, uh, whoever it was that said you, you didn't like Paul, so, you, you, you know, thumbs up on that one from yesterday. Um, Hawkeye talked about the, the, the rapture already. He's, oh, good, thank goodness that's out of the way, the simple truth, you know, there, there is no rapture. All right. 2000, yes, two, 2012, yeah, yeah, he, he pointed out. Yes, yeah, that's right. But anyway, 2012, it was uh, around the time of Christmas, yes, I think it was just before Christmas. We moved to this house in July 2012, so um, Yah wanted to buy me a gift, and I played the piano as a child, but always the child, thinking about the day she owns her own grand piano. So straight to Gum Tree, looking for yeah, <laughs> looking for a grand piano, and there was one listed for sale about a three-hour drive from here down on the Sunshine Coast. So we drove down this day after communicating with them to look at the uh, the piano, which is a K Kawaii beautiful instrument made during the 70s. It's issue it has. 600 on it. It's beautiful, in excellent condition. And so we went down to look at the piano. Yeah, that work, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> to look at the piano. Right. There we go, back in the line. Where are you? Right, zoom out a bit back. Or in, in rather. That's it. <laughs> okay, now come sit back down. Oops, they, got, they have remote controls for these things that you can. Uh, they have to look. Remote. They do have one nice cameras, but I, we haven't got it now because. I, I, have one, have one. Mm. I had a camera years ago with all remote them. in Canada, about 1994. Beautiful camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah strip this thing. Oh. So back to our rapture ready story. Oh, and the grand piano. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. Tell me, because this, this is in response to. Oh, well, the grand piano. Yeah, right. yeah. Okay. So we drove down to this magnificent home. It was used as a bed and breakfast, I believe it was, and a Scottish couple. Now, we look at the piano and, and it's lovely and they tell us the story and how many uh, had played on it over the years. They brought it up from Sydney, they'd had it restored and, uh, yes, expert, the pianists, concert pianists played on it, etc, etc, etc. So we sat to, uh, we'd already said that yes, we'll, we'll take the piano. So then we started talking and they tell us that they are Scottish and that they are selling up their beautiful home, downsizing, get rid of, of all their worldly goods uh, because they were moving to a much smaller uh, location where the Lord was calling them to be ready for <laughs> the rapture. So just picture this, here is God himself, the Lord Jesus Christ, sitting in the living room of these Scottish folk who are giving away for a song their beautiful grand piano to God himself and we hear this and so of course I cannot help it, can I? It's not like you. <laughs> because I, I know the kind of a woman that this is. This is the woman. She's only about three foot tall. Luckily, but there was, this was a woman who would get up to meet with her Lord in secret. She would be praying to him every morning for hours and reading the scriptures, and she'd be calling out to him, and and she would have such a wonderful close relationship as she's hearing all of these whisperings that he was. I, I knew so exactly. I show up and she throws me out the <laughs> So I say to her, I say to them both, there well, is. this is your lucky day. You <laughs> <laughs> the rapture ready because he is the Christ. Well, and then I start to go into this. Now, this was actually before Benedict had 
announced, of course, but all of the information was out there, the declaration to Queen Elizabeth to, oh, what, no. what was it, get your, uh, what was the admonition to Elizabeth well, I said to, it, from the court? In, in oh, I was locked up in that court. <laughs> Actually, two Supreme Courts at the same time. They, they didn't know who was going to have me first. And uh, I was locked up in this jail, and uh, uh, one of the native Indians there was uh, one of the guards. And quite a humorous. They got a very lovely uh, personality in the North American Indians. Or, these are the carrier Indians on Vancouver Island. And uh, I said to him, You've got a pen and a paper. I want to write a letter to the note to the judge. And the letter, note was to tell the Regina to get her vagina off my throne. And I sent that to the, to the judge. Who <laughs> responded? Later. And he, he thought it was all very amusing. And uh, I defended myself in court, and um, I was wandering around, um, and I had my wife, who had made all the trouble uh, for me, and had me arrested. And uh, she didn't know I was going to be defending myself, but when she, the prosecutor had a, a talk to her first, and all these terrible things I'd done, and I beat her up and I did this and did that and I worshipped Satan and whatever. So uh, they had all the evidence against me. Had a, I, I did a drawing of uh, uh, the window of Pegasus with the horse Pegasus coming through it and uh, with 6666 on the bottom of it. And she had said that this is Satan. So when he said, your witness, I stood up and she near melted through the floor. <laughs> Almost ran up the it's chair. like Caiaphas did when he realised that he'd crucified you and now you're back. So I was raving on and, and Judge Claver, he thought it was very amusing. And uh, I'm wondering about, and uh, I said to her, now this business of the 6666, you know as well as I do, that there's how many lords are on the Old and New Testament. Right? So you're, you're lying up front. And I said, if I beat you up, let me, I'm bloody bigger than Muhammad Ali and twice as strong. I said, if I hit you, you're going to the hospital and that's where you're going to stay. So this she was trying to do, that I was an abuser, that I worshipped Satan and all this kind of stuff. Um, primarily to get a pension that I was getting from the Workers' Compensation Board for the doctors who tried to poison me in 1975. They put all this fluid in my back, this mm. contrast, that usually if it wasn't taken out, it's a death sentence. Well, mm. they put 16 cc's in and uh, that was it. Took nothing out. They said on the form they took out one cc, which is bullshit. They took nothing out because I was there at the time. But that stuff was later banned in the 80s, and uh, this has been done in the 75 era. So, um, yeah, so that didn't kill me either. And I, I, in the court, I said, look, if I was going to do to the judge, I said, look, if I'm going to do this bitch in, we've just been travelling down to Belize, driving through Mexico and so forth, and I said, there's a thousand places down there you can do somewhere and bury them. I said, even if you did get caught, it's not really a crime to kill your wife in Mexico. Right? <laughs> <laughs> you can buy your way down for a thousand, thousand pesos, right? Well, the court just erupted in laughter, right? So that was the end of that story. But anyway, I still got sentenced to the uh, Forensic Institute, which um, was all set up. The government wanted to be in the Forensic Institute so they could do all these tests on me and blood and so forth. <laughs> so it was all a very amusing story. But that really is another story. Right. No so that brings us back to the piano and the rapture oh, the piano. Oh, the bloody piano. <laughs> the rapture readies. So after I said that, this woman just froze, looked, and then she ran from the room. She left. She was and her husband, husband was there, like, uh, he, was looking, <laughs> he, he wanted to know some more. Um, so we, we left there having made arrangements to take delivery of the uh, piano and all those kinds of things. And he, I did send him information through an email and, and everything like that. But they were the Scottish rapturees. Now, before we oh, moved easy. into this house, and we only put this together later after this experience with Scottish rapturees, that the furniture, we, we, we bought a household full of furniture. We paid $1,000 because we had nothing ourselves and needed everything. So uh, again, another Scottish couple were leaving to go back to Scotland. Leaving their family and grandchildren here to go to Scotland. To go Why? to Scotland. Rapture ready. And we now know oh, that bastards. that's why they were they were going back to get ready for the rapture from Scotland. So we have their leather couches and everything else that has <laughs> worked out just fine for the last oh, years. Um, so yes, the, the rapture uh, theory. Truly, like, truly, Jesuit. Jesuit. In modern times, people are truly amazing. Um, 
Mm. They're all Jews. Every Christian's a Jew. You don't know. Mm. Right? The Torah and the Moses laws and all this kind of shit. That's amazing. Truly. Anyway. All right. So I'll more children, so. <laughs> Donna Juanita, thank you, uh, Donna. I. This is the one with uh, uh, a fiancé, um, your son's fiancé living in northern New South Wales. And yes, so this is the response. Wow, thank you so much. We three are driving northwards in July this year. Glad uh, this July. year to see my father coincidentally west of Gladstone. We all have our own swag so we can camp in your yard. That's an Australian uh, swag is a... Uh, a uh, Oh, what is it? The man from Snowy River. Oh, oh yes. Hmm. And the swag is um, what you carry. That is like your roll, that you roll out on the ground and yeah. sleep in a bag. And all that kind of thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they call a man who wanders around who is unemployed during the Depression uh, a swaggy. Hmm. Well, there you go, a bit of information. And uh, Pamela, you say, uh, I had a vision of you just the other day in meditation, and now I am. Here. Before she met us. So, wow, blessings in love and life. And then you say that Gary is ill today. Please send healing to him. Everybody, um, please let Gary know that he must be praying now in the new Look, age. Look, he's an old man. You're probably mm. not going to be able to convince him one way or the other. He's, uh, he's a nice fella, as most people are, really, religious people. Right. But, um, no, just, never ju ju just our just our take. Unless I send him a uh, handkerchief. <laughs> just just our take on the events of the last week, where uh, first Cindy and then Gary announced the news, uh, and it seemed to be through default, really. But we, because it's been so suppressed, love it. Thank you both very much. Um, interesting. Just noting that the Gary has a news, the greatest news in all of history. Mm. Nothing beats this. And it was three minutes of a 32 minute um, video and apparently he was quoting scripture after scripture after scripture for that 30 minutes, was it? Because yeah, I, I, didn't totally listen, I didn't listen past the, uh, where he made the announcement. Um, the focus should be all attention now on the news that he gave three minutes of and the attention to that. What is it? And thoroughly investigate. Oh, I'm used to it now. So, yes, please, those that do know Gary, get that across to him. The year of Yah's redeemed is strictly oh, yeah, about the, the soul redemption uh, and those that recognise Yah. And, uh, yeah, he deserves. Uh, somebody mentioned that he always thought that he would announce the Lord. Well, he has, but he's got to pay a whole lot more attention to it than three minutes out of what he said. And then upload a video about Francis because he's told by this Kent Dunn, whoever he is, that Francis is going to the USA to make the announcement of the alien Jesus. Oh, Hello. Yeah. Do you... Happy name for me, it's the alien. <laughs> well, I'll put up with that. alien simply means from a foreign nation. Oh. Well, certainly we are alien to the USA and every other nation outside of Australia. Oh. <laughs> so um, please get that, that message uh, I know what the Pope Gary. does, because he's not a Pope anyhow. He's, to be a Pope, you've got to be a sacerdotal priest. And then you've got to become a... Bishop, Sac that then you be a, can become a pope. It's a sacerdotal priesthood, which means it's um, king and priest. Mm. That's it, it's the monarchy, it, the sacerdotal monarchy rather. Priest, king. That's the only reason that uh, the Vatican came well, into being just, on that well, basis. Based on that, Francis is a psychopath. Mm. Totally. And see, the vicar of Christ started in uh, 1087 where the um, <clears throat> Pope then regarded himself as being Christ in the flesh, with the same powers, and that's been passed on. That's where your Vicar of Christ is 666 in Latin. And, uh, of course, he gets uh, into position of power, and he is now Christ. But at the first ceremony at the uh, Basilica, St. Peter's Basilica, the uh, priest there sings a song, um, dedicating uh, it to Lucifer and they believe that Christ is the son of Lucifer so he is Christ the son of Lucifer that's what he believes mm. losing which is of course is, you know, that's all part of his and you get closer to God by making suffering happen uh, yes 
That's why they don't do anything. They just want to be down amongst all of the miserable poor and people. live amongst them. Miserable people are closer to God. So therefore, once they're, they're among the miserable, energy. they suck the energy of the... The ones who they believe are closer to God. Yes, just... It's, uh, called the, it's called the miserables. And uh, Doreen says, I have never laughed so much warmth <laughs> while watching a video as I do yours. <laughs> this is what true love looks like. And uh, yes, you ask about Yah's favourite colour. Um, um, blue. <laughs> Royal blue, or the blue of his eyes, sky blue. Oh, there's a Wedgwood blue, the car we had in, still have in Rome. Mm, Wedgwood blue. Wedgwood blue, that's a beautiful, beautiful. blue. But, uh, blue, thank you very much, Doreen, for your comments. And all of you, Donna, you're continuing to comment. And um, uh, so, so Donna says, I, I just watched watch the movie trailer trailer, usually Hollywood foreshadows themselves. This makes me wonder, I know that the devil lives in Hollywood. Oh, what was, you. what, no, I think you're referring to the, oh, um, I think you're referring to the movie, The Life of Brian, which is Yah's favourite movie. It's that mm. sense of humour. He doesn't mind Monty Python's sense of humour at all. Um, but, um, well, total blasphemy, but that's not well, yes, exactly. Uh, it is blasphemous, but I mean, you can still, especially when you're the one they're talking about. And his name is Brian, and his father, stepfather's name was Reg. Hello, and he was born in Capricorn, January the 11th is Capricorn. And you say, uh, uh, sorry, I've always thought Monty Python movies were stupid. Well, yes, they are. Yeah, they're so stupid. It's funny. Um, but, it's also but Donna, you're continuing to wade your way through. You have a beautiful family. I, I, I've left this. Don't worry about your your you you have a slice of heaven, absolutely amongst your family. Just to and, say, and your sister married a Colombian, and they're all family. Great, that's awesome. You've got beautiful children, and you're yes, continue just to enjoy. If you're and, happy, that's it. All right, <laughs> what's that song? If you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. <laughs> Wasn't it a Sunday school song? <laughs> <laughs> she has a, actually a very beautiful singing voice. Who? You. Uh, well, the world knows that that <laughs> is not true. <laughs> uh, so I'm just scrolling now again through... Um, Looking for more. Yes, and... Uh, <laughs> Anna Carter, a shout out to you, darling. You've, uh, you've been watching now for a while. Um, and Anna Batashera, our faithful Andrea Anna, who is responsible. Lovely, lovely lady, Anna. Anna, Saint, Saint Anna, we call it. Andrea Anna is uh, the one that broke through. Yeah, she's it's all up to Andrea. That's Andrea, being a German. Yeah. She was the one that contacted the papal office. And um, well, she George Van Swain made the mistake of allowing her to. Uh, Contact the Pope. She found on the uh, internet a Facebook page that had been <laughs> set up for Pope Benedict. And it was George Ganswain and Father Giuseppe Gibello who were the administrators Lovely. of it. And she broke through and says, is, is this really? And they said, yes. And she asked, um, she told Pope Benedict that she had a message from the Christ. Anyway, that resulted in what... It, that's right, this is what I wanted to clarify for people. Well, that was like a lead. The communications that went on uh, began with Anna. She had a half hour email audience with Benedict. Within that half hour, she had given enough evidence, historical evidence, she put together the, the bloodline, the history. But also, when he asked her, her for a photograph and she sent it, he immediately, can I, I want to speak to Mr. Marshall now. And it, just happened to be 3.16 a.m. here, and of course we were asleep, so he had to wait. So it was Anna that broke through the wall to begin the communications that began for us on March the 11th, 2013. Now they were live email communications. Uh, Pope Benedict would send an email, Yah would wait, respond, Benedict would wait, and it was backwards and forwards like this. In the meantime, I was communicating live through Facebook message with Father Giuseppe Ciavello, 
who was the man responsible for putting up the Facebook page as a tribute for Pope Benedict and getting Benedict onto the computer because Benedict's computer illiterate. So it was uh, me communicating with Father Giuseppe, filling him in the blanks. He was just over the moon delighted. As Pope Benedict was live emailing with Yahweh. That is the record on the service. It was the Pope's idea. It was the Pope's idea to do it that way, which is great because. So we got all the emails, right? Yes, we have the emails printed up, they're on the service. And when it came, um, it was. So I want you to note the timeline here. That was Monday, March the 11th here. It was still, um, it was in the early hours of Monday morning for Benedict. He was up late at night responding to Yah, that kind of thing. And then, so he had all 24 hours, if you like, of the communications. But he'd had the photograph that um, mm -hmm. Anna had sent to him, which was the shroud overlay from 2010. So. It was that that he was walking with, doing the rosary and carrying around with him. And he describes in the apostolic letter, and you can read the actual email where he comes back now, the 12th of March, which is the day that the conclave convened. They all met for the first day mm. to elect the next Pope. Francis was elected the following day on the 13th of March. But it was March the 12th that Pope Benedict comes back and you could tell the change in his tone. He was like a child again. And he said that Happy he made answer. me feel so young. And he was responding to and laughing because Yah was telling him funny stories of his life. And so he's sitting up in bed waiting for these emails to come in because he was laughing. Well, I think that's so <laughs> sweet. There's an old man in his 80s sitting up in bed, waiting for me to send him a funny story. <laughs> he could laugh himself to sleep. Yeah. <laughs> so that is how the communications went down. It was March the 12th, 312, the number of his name, that he made the announcement and Revelation 312. by instructing, it, he said to Giuseppe, Father Giuseppe, I want this photograph to go to a place of honour. So it was Giuseppe who uploaded that shroud overlay photograph. Oh, I want to cry now as I think about it. Uh, he uploaded it uh, as the cover photo for Pope Benedict's Facebook page. And then just simply said, you know, from Pope Benedict, finally I have met him through the email, Salvatore Mundi. So that was March the 12th. That's Latin for Saviour of the World. Saviour of the World. And of course he wanted to know from Yah, well who's going to be, who's going to be the next Pope? And Yah back, wrote back and said, well it doesn't matter who it is. Whoever walks out of the conclave is going to be your biblical anti-Christ. You may as well put a slug through his brain and save the world a whole lot of grief. But Benedict, so innocent, naive, that spirit of humility and pure in heart, that's why he recognised, oh my God, it's him. And um, he, he just thought Francis was wonderful. He's more Christ-like than I am. You can read it in the conversations which are up at the Scrib site for the world to read. Mm -hmm. So this is how the communications were recorded. And then, of course, we've got um, the night of the arrest. Giuseppe was talking to me through the Facebook, when he says, he comes back and goes, Mrs. Marshall, all capital letters, the police are here, they've come to arrest me. And he talks about how Francis is charging him with treason. And that he's, he's dragged off and that's it, nothing more from Giuseppe until days later when he's been transported out of Rome at night after being, he describes later when he got back in contact with him. He's now in a place um, in Sicily uh, what was it, Avoca? Uh, Avoca, I think, was the name of the place, but a small town in Sicily. And of course, it's from there that Giuseppe escapes with the, the guy that was with him, and then we get the notice. At that one stage there, it goes into La La Land. Yes. We don't know uh, what part what is has been fact taken or over fiction, by, by the, uh, the people that was the, the police, the thugs. 
that were uh, controlling the internet. Yeah. So. Because but it, anyhow, it was our guy who, who just said, look, all of these communications have come from the one location Police. when they're supposed to be, you know, kilometres away and these events are supposed to be. But are all the sources... Are you can do that. You can, trace, you can trace your email. Well, your IP address. So that's, yeah. that's oh, what that's right. was done. And uh, so that seriously... Uh, but, you know, we were told he had been shot dead by an eyewitness. And so I'm reading this for the first time and I burst into tears. Because I'm reading... Actually, I screamed yeah, to, yeah. to read... This is what's happened to beloved Giuseppe. So, you know, there was all of this emotional response to what we were being told. And it's all recorded, both video and on the, the Scrib site, the, the communications. So these, these Jews will kill you, no problem. Oh. They've been, they meant to take first, first World War, Second World War, and all the time up until that First and Second World War. Millions died because of the Jews. It's all behind The Jews are all behind it all. Does Yes. Uh, mm -hmm. Oh, okay, Donna is Donna Juanita is asking another question. I, oh, okay. I haven't seen these come. Dear God, did you know when who you were as you were growing up? Yeah. When did you know that you are Yahweh? I grew up and loving and worshipping Mary until fairly recently when I learned that her um, let me read all of this all the way through. Uh, on the 31st of uh, August, 1950, two boys were uh, at this in the convent, um, and um, two boys were arguing at lunchtime. Big boys, and one was saying Jesus was an es uh, was a uh, Sadducee, and the other boy said no, he wasn't. He was a Pharisee. And I erupted into a rage and I ran towards them. And uh, I was a very tough sort of a kid because I was beaten all the time by the uh, stepfather. A day wouldn't go past, whether it be the physical abuse or mental abuse. Anyhow, uh, I uh, became an angry child in that sense. And as I rushed towards these two, they stepped aside. Turns out, of course, they were angels. I didn't know that. And how did I know at that tender age that Jesus was an Essene? Because I screamed at them that Jesus was an Essene. And I was going to go punch him. And as I stepped aside, I ended up going through a veil of time and I ended up on the steps of a, what appeared to be an old building, maybe a synagogue. And uh, Mary had walked down the hill. We'd just come back from Egypt. Um, I was uh, a little over six and a half years old. <laughs> we had a... We ran out of cards. Card. Right card. But now I was saying, there were two boys, two big boys, and uh, one said Jesus was uh, a Sadducee, and the other one said he was a Pharisee. And as I rushed towards them, I was screaming that Jesus was an Essene. Now the point being, I did not know, no one had told me, nor did anyone ever speak about Jesus being an Essene, because that's been wiped out of history. So as I ran towards these boys, they stepped apart, and then I'm through a veil of time and space, and I'm uh, sitting on the steps of the synagogue outside of uh, Carmel, which later became Nazareth. And we'd just come back from Egypt, and I was tired. Mary had walked down the hill, and she's probably 20 or 30 metres away. And she calls me. She says, Jesus, Jesus, come. So I ran up to her, and uh, uh, I used to run everywhere. I never walked around. And I'm looking up at her, she's on the right hand side. She was a tall, beautiful woman, blue eyes, and... Uh, Fair skin. Nice, fair skin, slightly tanned. And she said, now Jesus, I've got something to tell you. If the Jews find out we are Essene, they will kill us. At that moment, I turned around, I could sense uh, movement behind me, I guess, and Joseph, a very big man, was walking out of the um, building and he had his arms on the shoulders of uh, two men that were dressed in black, black beards, very dark skin, black eyes. And the reason for that is that by that time, um, the Idumeans, which were descendants of Esau, had become the Jews because they adopted uh, Judaism. So they were, a diff they were not the true Jews. Uh, Judah 
is a tribe of royalty and uh, that uh, ended up 1400 BC or so. Um, one half of it, of the royalty, ended up in Ireland, Tara Ireland. And if you go to the Chronicles of Ireland, it all talks about how Jeremiah showed up after 586 BC and 583 BC, after Nebuchadnezzar had uh, taken uh, the city of Jerusalem, he starved it out, and then took the king and blinded him uh, after killing his four sons before his eyes. And left his two daughters because he didn't believe, this is Nebuchadnezzar didn't believe, that the royal line could travel down through the, uh, the females. But Jeremiah was the grandfather of Zedekiah. And uh, he took the children, that would be his great grandchildren, first to Egypt and then by ship to Spain, then across through the uh, uh, past Gibraltar to Ireland and there's a town or area of Tara and that is where the royal line continued because the royal line of kings was there that's one side of the branch if you like and uh, from there it continues down for 1200 years to finally it uh, was transferred over to Scotland and then from Scotland that continued down to uh, um, present day but the uh, King William the Lion was a great grandson of Margaret and uh, Malcolm III, and it is Margaret that was a patron saint of, uh, became the patron saint of uh, Scotland, and it's the hospital, maternity ward, where I was born in St Margaret's, and that's why all the numbers, um, which I've explained. And now I'll put it in this PowerPoint right now, right? Yes. I tend to go over things a couple of times because new people coming in, they, they don't understand, so I, I've got to repeat myself, so when you see something and repeat it, well, you've got to go past it, but take it in mind that the new people want to know. I just wanted to point out, too, I noticed in, uh, I think, the last video... So that's what I found it. Uh, the zero on Yas computer sometimes doesn't work. <laughs> and so, if I don't pick it up, often I, I, you'll see... All my stuff is junk. It's half worn out. It's crazy. So, uh, a few times I've just read what it should read, but there's been a zero missing. Yeah. But uh, now, now Donna is still asking, she says, when I learned that her image or essence was being misused by the Catholic Church and New Age movement, I feel confused. What is the truth? Is it okay to recite and repeat Hail Mary? Of course it is. My mother, eh? And just... Do you Hail Marys and finish it no, all in the name of Yahweh, Jesus, Brian, and... It's a thought like process where the heart is, isn't it? Yes. It's not the bloody Catholic Church. I mean, the Church is nothing. The idea of the Church is to give you guidance, and they're doing a very poor job of that. When I went to the Catholic school, I never talked about Jesus. <laughs> it's a bank. I was very surprised. But, I mean, I knew it all anyhow, because it's just... As I said, um, I cannot recall not being able to speak as a child. I had the intelligence of a, a very wise old adult, even when I was less than two years of age. Mm. So, uh, it's a strange thing to but think that the reason I had this information then and now is because I am the father. I was a father with Jesus inside the blood, and now I'm the father physically you can see. Look, I just, um, as I'm reading this comment here, seeing what's going on, uh, I think I mentioned that um, after Gary uploaded the, uh, the, the announcement that he did read Yara and then quoting the scriptures, his next video was about Francis going to the USA and announcing an alien, Jesus, etc. But it's being, it's being planted in the mind, all right, people are picking up on it. Somebody here says... Four reasons Jesus is coming. Jack Van Impey, the stage is set for the coming of Jesus. Um, Jack Van Impey. Jack Van Impey. Man as a hatter. Now, I, you know. Disciple of Billy Graham. He is here, of course. So you can look at all of these now and go, yeah, right, and not be fooled. And I just want to point out to you that the likes of uh, John Hagee, um, oh. uh, Pat Robertson, the 700 oh. Club, Benny Hinn, Henry Hinn, mm -hmm. any of the Hinn family, uh, Joel Austin and the ministries, the, the abomination that Hillsong Church is, all of these high, Joyce Myers, all of these high profile ministries, 
that are into the money, 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 and they are all preaching and teaching the doctrines of devils because the Christ is already here. If they were pure in the heart. So they're not going to make it, so therefore it's going to be happy. <laughs> if any one of them were true, then they would humble themselves like Benedict did, and they would be able to see God if they were pure in heart. That's so the that test. So I think, yeah, we're going to leave that there now, and <laughs> we'll just record the PowerPoint. We'll do the PowerPoint, and that'll be uploaded yeah, within a couple of hours. Right, okay, so do you want to I'll get go. close with your essence to the camera and send the vibe <laughs> out to it? <laughs> well, I must have loved this anyway, to It's baby. delightful to meet your acquaintance, all of you. And, and as, uh, as our, our new findee says, love beams <laughs> back at you, everybody watching. <laughs> Be happy. Be happy.